What's up guys, I'm Alan with Edge Autosport and for this video, I wanna talk about boost control. So I've done a boost control video before. Uh, it was a little bit silly. This one is more serious. I have actual parts in front of me, a uh, big turbo, a stock turbo, a boost controller, a wastegate, and and of course the internal wastegates that come on the turbos. And I want to, first of all, make sure that it is absolutely clear how to hook up your boost controller when you're doing anything that requires changing these lines, changing the turbo, changing the wastegate. I wanna make sure that you hook this up correctly because if you don't, it can cost you an engine. This is the GTX 2860 Gen 2 that we're gonna be putting on Project Half Send in an upcoming video. This is the stock turbo from Project Half Send. Of course, Half Send currently has the P-Max or Garrett Power Max turbo. Uh, check out those videos if you want. Uh, but for boost control, I wanna make sure that when changing turbos, you guys get this correct. Uh, so to start off, we'll use the stock turbo. So like if you were changing your stock wastegate out for an upgraded wastegate, or if you're messing around and you, un you disconnect stuff, I wanna make sure you know how this stuff should be connected. So first of all, you need to know what the turbo is doing. Like, cause I, cause I use in my email certain terms like pressurizer or, uh, or compressor or things like that. So I wanna kinda like go over the anatomy of the turbo a little bit uh for just for those of you that don't already know this is the compressor housing right here this is the compressor cover the middle section here is called the chra and then this section is the turbine housing uh so the compressor cover you have your intake coming in here or in the case of the bigger turbo into this giant opening here um and and everything in this area here is pressurized this connects to your hot charge pipe right here this goes into the pipe that's your hot charge pipe that's the hot air that's being pressurized and coming out of the turbo so anything in here is going to be pressurized that's where you're going to get your boost source the boost source is going to be a line that's going from said boost source to the plug side of the boost controller so we go in there, and then in the case of the stock turbo, you have this fitting right here on the compressor side. You can see it is in the snail part, whatever you wanna call it, of the compressor. That is pressurized. You're gonna have pressurized air right there. So you're connecting that to there. So plug side goes to the pressure side, okay? Now, the next part is important. You have these two ports on the other side of the boost controller. This vertical port here, which is going in a perpendicular direction to these two ports, is gonna go to your waste gate, like so. And then, which this hose may not be big enough and definitely is not big enough, this side is the vent and it's going to the intake this is the inlet the compressor inlet okay so we have plug side pressure side that's going to the compressor cover or in the case of the bigger turbo it's going to be in a boost tap that goes in the silicone between the compressor outlet and your hot charge pipe inlet um, but this pressure side goes to the plug side this perpendicular line here goes to the wastegate, and then this side, which is opposite of the plug, goes to the inlet. You can also vent this port. In the case of the big turbo, I wouldn't do it with the stock turbo because you can have this open port here, but in the big turbo, it doesn't necessarily matter because you're gonna have, uh, you're not gonna have a port for it necessarily. And you can add a port with one of those little quick taps, but you don't need it. You can just vent it because it is just letting pressure pass. So to kind of explain what that means, I wanna explain how the boost controller works itself. There is a little valve in there that when energized at 100%, it's going to be venting 
all of the air past this port here. So it's just gonna be passing through. No pressure is gonna be going from here to your wastegate. And what that does is allow for all the boost the turbo can create. At 0% energized, you're going to have all of the pressure going through here to the wastegate. Now, what that means is if I'm telling you you're on a, like, or for instance, if you're on a map from me and you've just got your big turbo installed and you got your base map downloaded, it's gonna be targeting 0% wastegate duty cycle. And that's going to allow the turbo to run wastegate spring pressure. And how that works is the wastegate, internal wastegate or external wastegate has a spring inside of here that acts on this actuator and tries to keep it closed. Uh, when you hit it with pressure on this side of the can canister, it acts against the spring and opens the wastegate. So on a stock turbo, it's got about a seven PSI spring, maybe a little less on like this ATP turbo, for instance, it's going to have somewhere around a 12 to 12, probably like 12 PSI, I think is what these come with. Um, and so what that means is it takes 12 pounds of pressure to overcome the spring and open the wastegate. When the wastegate opens, you can see this little flapper in the exhaust here, in the turbine housing, that opens, and then the exhaust gases go through there and around the turbine wheel and that stops you from building boost. So when you have this hooked up correctly, plug side goes to the compressor side. This vertical port goes to the wastegate and this port either gets vented to atmosphere or goes back to the intake. When you have it hooked up correctly, it should on the base map run 0% wastegate duty cycle and it's going to send all the pressure straight to the wastegate which is going to open it as soon as it sees the wastegate spring pressure. So in our case with this turbo it's going to open it at 12 psi. You're going to run 12 psi on the base map. If you have an external wastegate that introduces some variability to the spring pressure. Because over here we have our box with all the springs from tile for the wastegate. So all these springs go in various combinations into this upper part here. And so depending on what spring setup you do, that's going to determine what your spring pressure is. Uh, for the tile wastegates, for these setups like this, I don't recommend going past 14 pounds springs. Uh, because that's good for 28 PSI, roughly, uh, max. Uh, again, the spring pressure is the minimum boost. We use the boost controller to achieve more boost. So don't be confused thinking that if you put 14 PSI spring pressure in the gate that you'll only be able to run 14 PSI, uh, because that's not true. As we use the boost controller to divert pressure away from the wastegate, you're, you're sending that pressure away. So at the point that maybe the wastegate sees its 14 PSI spring pressure to open the gate, you may be diverting uh, six PSI worth of the pressure. And so the turbo is actually creating 20 pounds of boost. Your engine's seeing 20 pounds of boost. The wastegate's seeing 14 pounds of boost. And that's how you're running, that's how you're achieving higher boost pressure than spring pressure. A couple important things to note about the wastegate, the external wastegate, for those of you that are installing them, there's a couple of important parts here that you need to know. So we got our air fittings and all that stuff. Uh, this is the valve seat or fire ring, uh, and it goes in the bottom of the wastegate. You can see here we've got the valve in there. Of course, there's no, um, there's no spring in there right now, but this sits in here like that and then it installs on top of the wastegate or on top of the turbo through this v-band clamp here and if you don't get this in here the valve won't close all the way and you can see you can see daylight around that so you're going to be losing your exhaust energy 
through the wastegate, it's gonna bleed past where this should be, and you're not gonna be able to achieve boost. So if I tell you that your turbo is underperforming and that it, you might have a wastegate issue, this is one of the things that you need to make, make sure that you've installed uh, when you set this up, and it might be what I'm talking about if you have a problem building boost or if your turbo's lazy, it doesn't spool fast, and doesn't build boost like it should. Uh, it may just be that you forgot this little guy in here, uh, which goes in the bottom, and that's what the wastegate, the valve and the wastegate seals against so that you can actually direct all of the exhaust gases through the turbine. The other important part to notice is how you hook this up. You'll see when you get your, your external wastegate, you have ports labeled as air and ports labeled as H2O, at least on the tile gates. I think the TurboSmart gates are similar. Uh, they're gonna be labeled, I would assume. But uh, how to set up the boost control for the wastegate is you're gonna want, or at least how I have people set it up, talk to your tuner if I'm not the one tuning your car and make sure that they uh, that you have it set up how they want it. Um, this is just how I want it set up when I'm tuning. Uh, for the external wastegate, you're gonna connect your vertical port on the boost controller for the Focus ST. You're gonna connect that to this bottom port on the wastegate. It can be any of these bottom ports. You have one, two, three on the bottom that are air ports and then you have one, two airports on the top of the gate. And you need, to cre you need to connect this vertical port to one of those airports. Whichever one lines up where you can get to it easily is fine. Uh, you're gonna cap the other ones. You wanna make sure that you have them all capped if you're not using them. Except for one of these top ports, you're gonna need to make sure you leave vented because the as the pressure builds in here to hold against the spring uh, you don't want to have these capped because then that makes it harder for you to act against the spring because there's the diaphragm in there that's not going to want to move if you have air pressure and the spring pressure it's going to basically basically increase the amount of pressure it takes to overcome the spring and open the gate so if you put in a 14 pound spring it may take 20 pounds of boost before it actually moves the spring and then you're running way too much boost. Well, 20 pounds isn't way too much boost, but it's too much boost if you're trying to run 22 as the max, then you can't, then 20 pounds is too close to the max that you're running. And it makes it hard to control boost if your minimum pressure is close to the maximum pressure that you're gonna be running for your particular setup. If you block these, I can show you real quick, it's something you can even feel yourself if you, if you have one of these in your hand. There's no springs in here right now. The valve just actuates freely, and it's easy, super easy to push up on that valve and, and open it. But if I put my hand and or my fingers over those top two ports with the valve down, you see how much more difficult it is to open, and it won't stay open. It wants to stay closed. So if you block, if you if you block those off and you don't have a way for air to get out of there, then it will cause boost control problems. So with the big turbo set up, you can get rid of this little guy, not necessary anymore. Uh, for the big turbo, it's a little bit different because one, like if you get an ATP kit, you don't have any ports on the compressor housing, like I mentioned earlier, to connect your boost pressure line too. So you're gonna get a quick connect fit or a boost tap, I think is what ATP calls it. Oh look, there it is. <laughs> it looks like this. And it's got a little uh, locking collar in there so that you can keep the, the nut from backing off. But basically, uh, it goes into your silicone tube. Uh, you have a washer and you you drill a hole in your silicone coupler you punch this through from the inside you put your washer on the outside and your nut you tighten it down nice and tight and this sucks into the silicone and the washer and this flange on the bottom create a seal and that's how you get a pressure source and you're going to have that sitting like right about here in your silicone coupler 
and that's where this guy is going to connect to for the boost controller. Wastegate connects the same as stock if you have the internal gate option. And again, you can I'll stick that in there. Uh, you can vent this port if you want, or you can use the second tap that they send and you can stick that in the inlet coupler and connect your vent to that. So that's up to you. Uh, I don't care either way. Now, the other part uh, that, that comes with doing the big turbo is there's another one of these controllers on the valve cover on the top of the engine and we don't need that anymore. So let's go over to half send real quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. When you do a big turbo install, especially an ATP kit, uh, you don't have to worry about this with the EFR kits as they have a blow off valve in the compressor housing just like stock. And so you can technically hook those up just like stock and it's fine. Uh, but with the ATP kits and you're going to have to run an XL kit or like the 3P hot pipe with the blow off valve. You've got to relocate the blow off valve from the turbo like stock to a charge pipe. And when you do that, you're not going to want to use this controller anymore. This controller is what controls the bypass valve in the stock configuration. And it's basically the same exact thing. Uh, it's the same valve as uh, the one that I was showing you over there. Um, you have how it works is you have this vacuum pump here on the engine. This creates vacuum and it goes into the controller and the controller uses that vacuum to control the bypass valve. But essentially you are eliminating the use of this and then you're going to use something like the Symposer Delete or a map tap that you're going to run a pressure line from here to your new blow off valve and that's going to give you a basically a mechanical operation of the blow off valve or a true vacuum source rather than using the vacuum pump and the electronic control of the bypass valve. Now, again, I, before I close, I want to stress getting this hooked up right. So make sure if you install it yourself, you can make sure you can double check your work that you hooked everything up properly. If you have a mechanic install it, you may still want to peek under there and double check for yourself to make sure that it's installed properly because I, I've had this happen time and time again with mechanics that have installed this and not hooked it up properly. And you will overboost because if this does not get pressure here at your wastegate, then nothing is telling this to open. It's going to stay closed and all the exhaust gas is going to go through the turbine wheel and it's going to spin this thing up to the moon and you're going to make all the boost that the turbo is physically capable of making. And, and that's a big problem. Uh, the base map is set up so that the throttle will close, it will try to protect itself, but it cannot always protect itself from that amount of boost and you could see motor failure in that case. And I don't want that to happen to you. That's why I'm doing this video. That's why I'm trying to show you guys the proper way to hook this up so that that doesn't happen to you. Okay, so that should pretty much cover all you guys need to know about hooking up your boost controller for the Focus ST with big turbo or stock turbo. I really hope this helps you guys. If it does, you can help us by liking the video, subscribing to our channel, and leaving a comment on the video. That helps get the video out in front of more people, and that goes a long way towards helping us and allows us to provide more content for you guys. We got a lot more videos coming for you, so stay tuned to the channel. We'll catch you next time.